Hey everybody, Terry from D-Lab. Look what we got on the bench. A piece of ham radio gear. Not a guitar amp. I know you guys have been waiting for something different. Well, here it is. This Ranger 2 has a very unique problem and it's probably going to be very difficult to fix. So it came in with the complaint that the band switch was frozen. It's actually not frozen. It'll go between 160 and 80, but it won't advance any further. So there's two things that can be. Either some of the linkage inside is bent or the upper VFO switch is seized up and not allowing it to toggle into the 40 meter and up bands. That's probably what it is. Let's take a look. Alright, here is the linkage I'm referring to. Sometimes this gets out of adjustment and just won't toggle the upper VFO switch. So here is 160 and 80. You can see the band switch is free to move. But when we try to go further, we're hitting this block. So this is supposed to be a free turning block. There's a switch up inside of the VFO. Well, guess what? It's seized right up, probably from sitting for a long time. Unfortunately, the only way to fix it is to remove the entire VFO cage in the front panel, get that switch out of there, maybe clean and lube it, or replace it. It's quite the job. Now right, here is the inside of the Ranger. This one happens to be a factory built unit. It's in pretty good condition except for that VFO switch. Also somebody cobbled in a push to talk relay and it wasn't a very good job so I need to remove that and replace it with a D-Lab push to talk module. But in this video we're going to concentrate on fixing that VFO switch. So to perform that task, I'm going to have to remove the front panel and then this aluminum box will have to lift out so I can gain access to that switch. It's a rotary switch. It's down in this corner of the VFO under a platform. It's very difficult to get to. So that's the task guys. Let's get it tore apart and see how it goes. Okay, I have the front panel removed from the Ranger as well as the aluminum cover of the VFO. I made a little discovery while I was in there. See those little green pellets? I believe that some rat killer somehow it got inside of the VFO compartment. I'm going to clean that out and continue with the repair. Alright, the easy part's over. I've got the front panel off and the cover of the VFO to expose that internal switch that I need to work on. So here's the problem. I really do not want to interrupt these solder connections on the components and pull this platform out of the Ranger. I would rather repair that switch without having to unwire it and I think I know how I can do it. Let me show you. Here's the plan of attack. I was able to remove the upper standoffs on the VFO platform. So that is loose. What I think I can do here is remove the shaft to get better access to the switch. There are two nuts that hold the ceramic wafer on the back of the framework of the rotary switch. I'm going to take these nuts off, raise the ceramic off the center post, then I'm going to get it underneath and disconnect the linkage and the nut and pull this frame out. And then I can do the repair work, lube things, put her back into place, and not have to desolder a single wire. What do you think of that? Well, obviously this is a very tight area. I'm not going to be able to have the camera in here while I'm doing the work, but I'll cut back and show you my progress. I've made some little magic marker indicators where the frame and the ceramic rotary section sit so I can get them aligned perfectly when I get this thing back together. So next step, I'm taking these nuts off and we'll raise up the ceramic rotary switch. Okay, I was able to get the nuts off of that little wafer switch using a pair of long nose pliers and a dental pick. So now I have to remove the lock washers and there's a little phenolic washer under there we should be able to lift up the ceramic rotary section. Alright, success. I've got the wafer section up out of the way. 
Now I can go underneath, remove the hardware, and get this framework out, and hopefully take it apart and fix it. So underside on this Ranger, there's an Allen key, and that is what holds this little square cammed gizmo of theirs onto the shaft of the switch. Looks like the shaft is pretty long, so hopefully I can snake it out of there and get this uh, rotary switch framework out where I can fix her up. And there it is. Yeah, I've got the nut off of there. Next step is just to swing this framework out. She'll easily come out. And I'll get her on the bench. We'll take it apart and clean and lube it. So if you look close, you'll see there is a little clip on this quarter inch shaft. Once you take that clip off, you can actually push the shaft out from the rear. Now sometimes they're pretty seized in there so I may have to heat it up, but it will come out and then you simply clean and lube and put the shaft back in and this switch will be as good as new. Alright, so you can see I've got that clip out of the groove, but that guy is not moving. So I am going to apply some heat, put this in a vise, and see if I can get her apart. There's also a little burr here on the shaft. I need to clean that off before I pull it through because I don't want to damage the inner surface. Alright, I got the switch in the vise, so I'm going to heat this and simply push down on this base and hopefully it should come loose alright heated her up for a few minutes and take a look there she goes alright so now I need to get it out of the vise and pull this thing apart but we are on the right road. Well, there it is. Got our part. I got to get that old lube out of there, clean the shafts up, relube this guy, put her back together. Okay, I've cleaned all the surfaces with lacquer thinner to get that old dried lube off. I'm going to apply some of this phono lube, which was made by GNC Electronics, but you can use a white grease as well. Okay, she's reassembled. Now you got to compress this a little bit to be able to get the snap ring back down where it belongs. We're about ready to reassemble the switch. Well, here's a little pre-test. Free to turn. Looking good. I'm going to go ahead and get this thing reassembled. I've got my lock washer back in place and remember I have my red index marks. So everything should line right back up how it was. All right, I've got everything back in place. I still need to tighten up these little nuts that hold the assembly together. But then we'll be ready to retest the band switch and see if it rotates freely. So in case you're wondering, to tighten up those little nuts, I take a dental pick and I push it in the slot of the head of the screw and then just take my long nose pliers and carefully tighten it up. All right, we're ready to test the band switch. Remember, only the 160 and 80 were good before, and then she'd lock up. There it goes into the 40 meter position. And then there's a 6 meter position on this Ranger. It's operating smoothly. Let's take a look at the switch on top. good to go. Alright now that task is out of the way this is a great opportunity to deoxit clean and lube the contacts on that VFO switch and change out the famous Chernobyl 18k resistor and as you can see this is the original. Alright now I'm going to test the VFO for output I have a Heathkit high voltage power supply I'm just powering the oscillator tube in the VFO by high voltage. I'm on the 160 and 80 meter band. 
And there is the 40 meter band. So the VFO is operational. Now I feel better about putting it back together. Okay, mission accomplished. I'm repairing that C switch. So now if you're confronted with this daunting task, you have an option. It just takes a little bit of time and patience, but it can be done.